Hey everyone, as some of you might know, I recently created a new YouTube channel called Dino Tales, where I will focus all the upcoming dinosaur cinematics. You can find the link to the Dino Tales channel in the description down below. So if you like my dinosaur content and would definitely want to see more, please head on over there and subscribe to my dinosaur channel. I hope by doing this to cater my videos more to those only interested in the dinosaur videos and give you the content that you want to see. Currently I'm uploading the current season episodes on there, but we'll start the newest season there very soon. Also, since I already started this season on the Kanoa channel, I will still finish it in its entirety on here as well. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the episode. With the Gallimimus being the latest introduction to the prehistoric zoo, the number of dinosaurs that will be able to get their time in the spotlight was coming to an end. Probably less than 10 could be brought over, and with the recent flux of scientists going absolutely crazy on splicing and dicing dinosaur DNA, there were more dinosaurs to choose from than ever before. But that was all in due time, and for now, the Gallimimus, a classic dinosaur at that, would get all the attention. These runners already had their shine during the 1993 park, though of course escaped during the power outage and trampled various areas. Since these dinosaurs of course preferred a lot of open space, it was essential to give them plenty of ground to do this in. Now, the amount of open areas was also very limited, but the park agreed to appoint the largest pen that was left for the Gallimimus to live in. Now in return, they wanted to be assured that plenty would be flown over, so at least 10 would be bought and brought in. Though the Gallimimus and their similar brethren had been represented in both the earlier zoo and also the safari park, the audience was all too familiar with them. The news and media buzz surrounding these dinosaurs definitely was not as big as some of the previous entries, but those who loved the old school vibes with these dinosaurs showcase their support. It was also because everyone knew only a handful of dinosaurs would be added that they took up bets and contests on what people thought would be the next dinosaurs that would be added. The Gallimimus was easy to move. Sure, they were very jittery, but they were not the brightest of dinosaurs. They easily forgot if they were panicking mere seconds ago. Almost like a goldfish, their brain reset every so often, and that made it to where they returned to a relaxed state pretty quickly once they settled into their new zone. But for Gallimimus, being relaxed does not mean that they sit still. They of course wanted to run and walk around, and luckily, the new zone was really to their liking. and thus it was time for the next dinosaur to be added, and the park wanted to be assured it would be another custom and never before seen dinosaur to any of the parks. Some preferred a carnivore, but there were others who believed they should leave that as one of the actual final dinosaurs, and thus in the end, the decision fell to add a Diabloceratops. Now Diabloceratops was one heck of a dinosaur to behold. It was astounding to some how many variations there were of dinosaurs similar to that of a Triceratops. And each so distinct and unique and these creatures were no different. Now the name might scare some people off that were a bit sensitive since it had the word Diablo in it. But it was with specific reason, as these dinosaurs had these two unique curled horns above their eyes and on the top of their crest. It gave them a bit more of a menacing or grumpy look than some of the other dinosaurs in the same family, but just like most of them, they were sweet at heart. The horns were also not angled in a way where they could offer much protection, and seeing how grand and large the crest was, it was most likely that these were once again issued to impress a mate. 
but unlike the recently added Styracosaurus with its vibrant tropical bird-like color pattern, it most likely will resolve to the size and shape of the crest rather than just the colors or patterns with the Diabloceratops. The interesting part was, however, that some of the colors to be seen were pretty rare amongst other dinosaur species, like a blue tint or even red, but they were not bright enough to where they would not blend in as they moved through a dense jungle. They were a bit smaller, and therefore would not be able to outrun most predators. They would resort to the earlier mentioned tactic of grouping up and having their faces pointed outward with their horns on display. Again, the horns themselves would not act as a great defense mechanism, but the predator in question might of course not notice. They could be intimidated if the group was big enough and decide to look elsewhere for some easier prey. The Diabloceratops were pretty popular, especially because of their unique design and it was a dinosaur that not a whole lot was still known about. Only two findings have been done of this dinosaur and both were displayed at the same museum and now seeing these dinosaurs walk and graze around finally gave the scientists the opportunity to solve more of the mystery behind this dinosaur. And so it was time to introduce the next dinosaur, as only two zones were left and the newest addition would be the Saltosaurus. This dinosaur was once again a marvel to behold, but also a bit dorky. They were one of the smaller sauropods out there, with necks and overall length that wasn't too long. In truth, there had been great white sharks found that were longer than the average length of the Saltosaurus. Their necks were also more horizontal, like a Diplodocus, but much shorter and therefore they were not able to eat from the top of trees as easily as most of their sauropod friends. They would have to be fed with a regular herbivore feeder, and their expanded body, which looked very broad and bloated from the front and back, made them look almost derpy when walking or trying to run. Much like the other similar dinosaurs, they were not able to fully run. It looked more like hobbling or a cute and funny waddle. Being as that they were much smaller and their builds again very horizontal, made them an especially easy target for carnivores. Their neck and head were right at the correct biting height, and their slow speed made it to where incoming hunters did not have to spend a lot of energy in the chase. But therefore, the Saltosaurus did have another defensive mechanism, though it was not as good as one might think. It had protective spikes around its body, and even a separate plate reinforcing its ribcage and sides, making it more difficult for a carnivore to bite and pierce through. However, this was not the case for more sensitive areas like the neck and head and thus only a few bites or deep scratches there was enough to put these cute dinosaurs down. What was very noticeable with these dinos was their unique and varied color scheme. Four were flown over in total and half of them were darker colored with a lot of green tints and shades and the other two were brighter almost a grey-white, but the big difference was that their heads almost resembled a bluish purple. It was the case that the lighter variants were both female and the darker ones were male, therefore having similar color schemes, like some ducks we know and see today, where there is a stark contrast between the two sexes of the same species in terms of color pattern. Everything went smoothly with the transporting of the dinosaurs over through their pen, and even these slow and sluggish critters were a big hit, purely by the fact that they were sauropods that were so small in comparison to the other ones in the park. And then, there was only one pen left. And thus we had come to one of the final dinosaurs that would be added. As mentioned before, they wanted to go out with a bang, and add a carnivore, and thus this honor fell on the Maposaurus.
This was a beautiful, menacing looking carnivore, and though it would be added to the last zone in the park, it would not be the final dinosaur to be added in total. There were still some areas, like the Diplodocus zone, where more dinosaurs could be intermixed and matched, and thus a last handful of dinosaurs would still be added before the park would be finished.